I'd love to know where the idea for cold weather came from. Sure. Um, well, I was starting to write a new script, uh, and um, the first two films we made together uh, were about the beginnings of a romantic relationship. Um, and so I wanted to write a script about a family relationship, and I thought the idea of doing something about a brother and sister would be interesting, because there's not very many films about brother and sister, and especially not many films where they more or less get along and like each other. Uh, and I was working on that, had gotten maybe 30, 35 pages into it, and I was reading a lot of detective fiction at that time, and the mystery element just started to creep in as I was writing uh, late at night one night, and I wrote quite a lot, maybe 15 pages that one night. Productive. And, yeah, very productive, but the kind of productive that while you're doing it and it's late at night, you have a feeling in the back of your head, like, I'm going to wake up in the morning and read this and, and delete it all. Right. Yeah. Um, but instead, I woke up, read it back, and was really excited to write the rest of the script, and, and I think that's where the script writing really took off, and I went from uh, writing a little bit every day to writing a lot every day, and finished that uh, draft in next less than a week, and then showed it to Brendan and uh, our other producer, Ben Stambler, who's uh, not here uh, in Los Angeles with us, but uh, we then worked on it for uh, two, two and a half months, trying to get everything in order, trying to find the right balance between the characters and the genre elements. Yeah, I think, you know, what is the heart of the movie was there, um, but uh, it was kind of figuring out how to make it work, and, you know, making a lot of adjustments, and kind of modifying you know, the characters a little bit, um, so everything kind of worked smoothly. Uh, uh, in the film, um, the character Rachel, uh, who disappears, uh, was actually originally two characters in the script. Um, there was an ex-girlfriend character who comes back to visit Doug, and then there was an old friend from high school, uh, and she was the one who disappeared. But uh, one, of the, one of the best notes we got was, you know, why don't you just combine them? And that really opened up a lot of other possibilities for things we wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think a lot of the rewriting was kind of about the middle portion of the script. Um, the first probably 20 minutes or so, or more or less, as you wrote the word, you know, with a few little modifications here and there. But, uh, you know, it was the mystery portion, I think deciding that uh, Carla should be a Star Trek fan. Yeah. You know, things like that. So it sounds like you guys collaborated with and got a lot of feedback in terms of how to make this kind of mixing of genres work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, We there's probably a group of five to eight people who... Okay. Uh, read the you know, various early drafts of the script and who we you know, trust uh, and then who also saw cuts of the movie as we were editing it and I think that's really important to have uh, beyond our immediate collaborators, uh, you know, us and, and Ben and our mm -hmm. director of photography Andrew Reed, um, to have those outside voices where you can um, trustable outside voices to say uh, well actually here's this thing that you've been looking at for a long time and, and can't think of it in a different way, but they can see it in a different way. Yeah, so that's very useful. Yeah, and, and you know, balancing the mystery and the more personal stuff was was you know one of the real sort of kind of important tasks as we were you know doing subsequent drafts. Just because I think earlier on you know it was very personal in the beginning, and then became probably a little bit procedural in the second half. And so you know we really wanted to make sure that um, that that those characters you meet in the first half then. Um, you continue to get to know in the second half, even as even as the the mystery plot is kind of driving the story. Hard to do, hard to do. I think you guys did it well. Yeah. So have, having a lot of uh, viewpoints when yeah. you're mixing those genres definitely helps because there's so many different ways it could be interpreted. Yeah. No, exactly. And you know, I think that also just with the mystery, I mean, we wanted it to be uh, such that you know. It, it, it didn't seem irrelevant, but you know, it seemed like the audience should be engaged by by it as it's happening. But also, you know, um, in earlier drafts of the script, uh, you know, um, I think there was there was there was more of a, uh, a threat uh, at the end. Yeah, there was some gunplay and some uh, higher speed chases that are yeah. in the current draft, and the scope just felt like it was getting too wide, and yeah, and it was getting to the point where yeah. one might wonder why these people. Just call the police. I really like how it stayed focused on characters. Yeah. You know, a lot of movies That's about, you know, mysteries or heists or whatever kind of leave that yeah. out of it. Yeah. And for me, personally, I like to see the characters more than anything. So if I can have the bonus of a mystery, yeah. that's great. But you have to have the characters yeah. follow yeah. through with everything. Yeah. For us, I think that, you know, the movie is essentially about three things. It's about the, the mystery and it's about where the movie is set in Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, but more than
than anything, it's about the relationship between Doug and Gail and Doug and Carlos. And uh, for me, things that genre films that focus on the characters and are really about um, finding out who someone is through the genre story, uh, those are the most exciting. And one thing we've talked about a lot is like, inspiration for this movie uh, in terms of camera direction is French thrillers from the late 50s and early 60s Melville movies at Duchapal, Grisby, and, and some others. Um, and we've talked about them in terms of camera direction. One thing we haven't talked about much is those movies ultimately are a way to understand the characters in them. Uh, yeah. Like, Bob Lefleur is really about this, this this guy who's you know aging and trying to figure out you know what it means to be uh, you know to kind of trying to leave a life of crime and and, uh, and be getting older and not want to do it anymore uh, and that isn't just a mechanism for to to forward the plot the, the plot I think turns out to be uh, a way to explore who that guy is and, and that I think uh, can be said of a lot of those movies yes. from that era. So how did you guys find your actors? Well, um, it was written with uh, Chris and Trieste in mind. We went to school at North Carolina School of the Arts uh, in Cincinnati, and uh, Trieste and Robin, uh, was Rachel, uh, also went there, and we knew them well. And uh, Trieste was in like 30 or 40 student films, so she was very highly in demand. She's busy. She yeah, was. she was in like everything. And no matter... You know, she was in a, a broad range of things uh, from... So when you were writing, you had them in mind, you said? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I thought they would make a really great brother and sister. Something about them suggested brother and sister to me. Uh, and so from page, you know, 1.5, I had them in mind. Um, I think I, 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 I hadn't seen Trieste in a while, and then I ran into her at a screening um, right around that time. Mm -hmm. So I was reminded of how much I liked her uh, at school. Uh, and... Uh, Chris was in our previous film, Quiet City, and um, I really wanted to work with him again. But um, yeah, they'd ne actually never met, so shortly after uh, coming up with a draft of the script that was readable, um, we all met up, uh, Chris, Trieste, and I, so they'd have a little bit of shared history, um, a ways out from production, so it wasn't just like, okay, get to know each other in the course of they have, two They weeks. have a great camaraderie, yeah. I think, and it's so subtle. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you explain something too much, it, yeah. And just kind of unfold yeah, well, even off screen, they developed that sort of like sibling kind of chemistry really quickly. I mean, we would like, when we got to Portland, we'd like go out to eat and like, you know, Trias would like bug Chris to like eat more, you know, or like she'd be like, oh, you're not, you're not eating because you don't have any money, I'll pay for you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and even still, I mean, they still have, you know, they still have that sort of dynamic. Um, yeah, that's great. I like all the scenes that are, because the pace of the film is really slow, um, but. It's not slow, making you like wonder what's happening or wanting it to, you know, pick up because I think actors are so interesting mm -hmm. to watch. And it's so subtle, but you're like totally absorbed mm -hmm. into what they're doing and what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. Was that deliberate when you were shooting to have it just be lots of long takes? Yeah, um, I really like long takes and even scenes that are cut into you know, shorter bits uh, <laughs> were shot from the beginning to end of the scene. A lot of things are important in filmmaking, the visual aesthetic, the music, how it's cut and all that stuff, but to me, uh, performance is the most important thing. If you don't have good performances, um, none of that other stuff really matters. Doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Performance. Yeah, so, so I, to get the kind of performances that I like, I think it's really important to shoot scenes from beginning to end, so the actors aren't having to zero in on delivering one line in a certain way. Uh, Instead, they can kind of live through the, the circumstances of the scene. Um, so then when you were editing, did you kind of t look at what you had and decide, well, where do I want to let things linger, and how yeah, am I going to yeah. use that as a device to kind of yeah. Build, yeah. build the suspense? I think also in the earlier portion of the film, the pacing is a bit slower than mm -hmm. in the latter half, and I think that's kind of reflective of the lives they're leading, you know? Um, you know, uh, Chris, who plays Doug, is kind of just hanging out on the couch and occasionally sort of, you know, taking trips to the beach and... I think the sort of pace of his life is, is sort of reflected in the pace of the film. Yeah. 